Hi, in this video I'm looking at solving these two differential equations and we're also given some information about x and y at one point and we will use this to help us work out a full solution not just a general solution. So let's have a look at part a. For part a we've got e to the 2y times dy dx minus x plus 4x squared equals 0. So to sort out a differential equation, we want to get everything to do with one variable on one side and everything to do with the other variable on the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is add x and take 4x squared from both sides. So that's going to leave us with e to the 2y dy dx equals x take 4x squared. And then we'll multiply both sides by dx to move that dx over as well. So that's going to give us e to the 2y dy equals x minus 4x squared dx. So now that we've isolated the variables, we can integrate both sides. And so that means that we can have a look at these individually. e to the 2y is just going to become e to the 2y divided by the derivative of the power, which is going to be 2 equals x becomes x squared on 2 minus 4x squared integrates to minus 4x cubed on 3 and of course at the end we end up with a constant. So let's tidy this up a little bit and then we'll have a look at this constant. So I've got two denominators of 2 so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and so that's going to leave us with e to the 2y equals, well, the timesing the x squared on 2 with 2, we'll cancel out those 2, so we're just going to have x squared, and the 4 times by 2 will turn into an 8, but we'll still have x cubed on 3, and our plus c will become plus 2c. And we can write this 2c instead of just 2c, we can rewrite the whole thing and have e to the 2y equals x squared take 8x cubed on 3 and we can instead change this to plus d. So we can change it and just have our constant not multiplied by 2 but we'll just say that d equals 2c. And we can do this because we've got a constant times a constant which is just another constant. So now let's put our information that we've got. We know that y of 2 equals 1 so that means that when x equals 2, y equals 1. So let's put this information in and solve for d. So we've got e to the 2 times by y, which is 1, equals x squared. Well, x is 2 squared minus 8 times by 2 cubed on 3. And of course, we also still have our plus d. Tidying this up, that means we have e squared equals 2 squared is 4 minus 8 times 2 thirds is 64, so we've got 64 thirds plus d. And if we work out this calculation here, 4 takes 64 thirds gives us negative 52 thirds plus d. And so that means that our constant d, if we add 52 thirds to both sides, we'll have e squared plus 52 thirds. So that's our constant d. So let's go and put that into our equation up here. And so we have e to the 2y is going to be x squared take 8x cubed on 3. And instead of plus d, we're going to have plus e squared plus 52 thirds. And so now I want to look at getting y on its own so that I just have y equals a function of x. So let's take the natural log of both sides. So that way it's going to cancel out this e. So we'll be left with 2y, which will be the natural log of x squared take 8x cubed on 3 plus e squared plus 52 on 3. And then lastly, we just need to get y on its own, so we'll divide both sides by 2. And so we'll have y 
equals a half outside of the natural log of x squared take 8x cubed on 3 plus e squared plus 52 thirds. And that's going to be as about as good as we can get that one, so that's all we're going to be able to do. Now, I will point out I could have tidied this up some more and isolated y before I found my constant, but that means that my d would have been trapped inside a log down here, and so then I would have had to have undone that log by raising back to the power of e, and I would have been basically back to where I started anyway. So I saved myself some time by substituting in here when it was a bit simpler than having to do all this work to get to this log just to find d and remove the log anyway. So let's have a look at part b. Part b, we have dy dx of sine x on y plus 2. So for part b, we have dy dx equals sine x on y plus 2. So for this one, we just need to get the y's to the left, the x's to the right. So we'll multiply both sides by y plus 2. And so that's going to give us y plus 2 times by dy. But we'll also times both sides by dx, which means on the right we'll have sine x dx. And then we'll just integrate both sides now that I've isolated my variables. The integral of y is y squared on 2. The integral of 2 is 2y. And then we're going to have the integral of sine, which is negative cos of x. And of course, we've got our constant of integration d. So now let's tidy this up a little bit by getting rid of this divide by 2. So we'll multiply both sides by 2, which means I've got to remember to multiply everything by 2. So that means I'm going to have y squared divided by 2 times 2 is just y squared. The 2y times 2 is going to give us 4y. And then we're going to have negative cos times 2, which is going to be negative 2 cos x. And then we've also got to times our d by 2. And so I can just rewrite this as one constant instead of 2 times a constant as y squared plus 4y equals negative 2 cos x plus c, where c equals 2d. So we can have one constant, because a constant times 2 is still just a constant. So now that we've got this almost as tidy as it can be, let's work out our constant by substituting in the initial information we were given. y of pi over 6 equals 3. So we're going to substitute in with this information, y of pi over 6 equals 3. So that means that when x equals pi over 6, y equals 3. So let's put this information in. We've got y squared, so we're going to have 3 squared plus 4 times by y. So we've got times by 3, and that's going to be equal to negative 2 cos of x, which is pi over 6. And of course we've got plus c. So now we can work out some of these calculations here. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. Equals negative 2 times by, well, cos of pi over 6. Well, if we have a look at a right angle triangle that is 1, 2, root 3, pi over 3, pi over 6. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. We've got the angle pi over 6, so our adjacent is root 3 over 2. Hypotenuse is 2, so we've got root 3 over 2 for cos of pi over 6. And we still have our constant plus c. 9 plus 12, well, that's going to be 21, equals the negative 2 is going to divide out with this 2 here, so we're just going to be left with negative root 3, which is plus c. So that means that our constant is going to be 21 plus root 3. 
So now we'll shove that back into our equation up here. And so we've got y squared plus 4y, let's make that y a little neater, equals negative 2 cos x and plus our constant. So we're going to add on our constant of 21 plus root 3. So now I just need to turn this into some form of equation. There is going to be no way I can isolate a y here so that that way I can have y as a function of x. So I will write this instead as an implicit function, y squared plus 4y plus 2 cos of x equals our constant of 21 plus root 3. And so now we've got an implicit function and that's going to be the best that we can manage. So that means we are now done. So if we need to solve differential equations which involve both x and y in them. We make it so that we've isolated the x's and the y's on either side of the equal sign. So y's on one side, x's on the other. And we integrate both sides, get some form of equation, find the constant, and neaten it up as tidy as we can get 